this is what well it was a wonderful experience uh, we have discussed a lot with the different uh, segments of the uh, society we met different peoples and and as i see that there is no problem between the two uh, two countries relationship but uh, there is a misunderstanding between the two because we don't have the relations between the people of uh, pakistan and the us we have the uh, relationship between the governments of both states when there is a clash of foreign policy you know, for your uh, national interest there must be problems always like we have seen in different and when we have a common interest we have a good relations between the both states as we see in the soviet invasion in afghanistan and after the 911 when we together fighting this war against terror so i mean that uh, in foreign policy no you don't have the friends or brotherhood you have the national interest and if you have the common national interest you will go side by side otherwise you have the problem i think there is a trust deficit between the two and we need to interact with the people to people contacts and i think this will improve the relations between the both states i i can't see any major problem between because uh, is not invaded um, us not invaded pakistan mm. or even not pakistan is harming uh, us in any case so i think there is no problem hmm. what about you mahman do you think there's a uh, i have to clear that we have to solve the problems the different problems we have now yeah like i th- i think the muslims are emotional people when we see the palestine problem yes we are focusing that problem and we we are uh, saying that it must be solved like the kashmir problem we have the problem so it will create the extremists in pakistan so th- i think these problems and the internal problems of pakistan uh, us not focusing the pakistani problems there we have the poverty unemployment and education these these are the problems we are facing in the pakistan but united states not focusing these problems in past but now in the kerry lugar will we see that they are focusing on energy and education these sectors now they are focusing that hmm. you think it's the same well, misconception uh, apply well i think actually um the uh, a lot of people in the us are not aware about the pakistani people as such what they are aware about is our state as a whole and our state's policies like foreign policy and other thing and what's going on and there's only bad news that mm. since it's just news so that's why it comes uh, from pakistan the only news is bad news so they have this whole misconception about pakistan and they think that okay every day there are blasts going going on you know stuff like that so people maybe uh, as malik said and ajaz said that a lot of people in america think that we are extremist by nature or by our mindset because of the environment yes, you're yes. exposed and to and because of the news that comes in hmm. but i think people to people contact will improve that and it will break stereotypes that's good yeah. have you noticed anything that uh you thought was a misconception of pakistan or pakistani people yes spe- i talk especially about women because people have been asking me from day one since i arrived in us that are women free to move in pakistan do they always have to wear a hijab or a burqa or do they have to take a dupatta or something and i've been clarifying this since day one no women are free in pakistan to move they can go anywhere they want they can do any work that they want to do and they do not have to cover themselves up they can just dress up like me and walk on the street mm. very easily we are a progressive nation and the best thing that has happened to us recently is democracy which is thriving now and we're progressing with uh, democracy but i agree with memel that the only news that is being projected is the bad news pakistan is not a terrorist nation we do very splendid and good things there are some uh, exceptionally talented people there in the politics in the cultural beat in the religious beat and we need to highlight more of the good things rather than the bad things now Good. Okay. So now uh Pakistan is a long tradition of independent and free press. Um but there have been instances of government interference. And uh domestically there are um reports of journalists facing harassment and intimidation by officials and even entire outlets have been shut down in some uh, remote areas. R- newspapers in rest of uh province of Balochistan Balochistan um in southwestern Pakistan uh were closed by order of state. And do you ever encounter state interference before or after publishing a story? Well, I have been working uh, uh, with the print and electronic media for the last two de- decades, but I have never been received any threat uh, from the government side or uh, or uh, the government made me under pressure that don't publish this news or this and that. I I didn't receive any such things, but 
there are there are certain reports that the journalists have been pressurized don't publish this and that uh, in fact bulistan is located close to pak uh, 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 afghan borders uh, so there are the news uh, which they have to face in the, in uh, problems in publishing some news but uh, i don't think that there is any pressure on journalists that don't publish this news well as well as myself is concerned i'm working as a news editor uh, and uh, my paper is a number one newspaper of the khyber pakhtunkhwa mm -hmm. but i am not receiving any interference or anything from uh, the government side however there is a limitations you have to go to these limitations uh, once in um, you know, my member he gave a story in the english newspaper and he leak out the strategy and the, uh, what was the army is doing tomorrow and they are going to op oh, there is operation going on in the malakand swat he gave a story and that uh, uh, the consequences were that the two soldiers were killed in this uh, attack operation so this type of things you have to you have self censorship you don't give that type things which will create problems for the others so uh, following that uh, how do you think journalists uh, cover the us involvement in pakistan we've all read about you know unmanned uh, drone attacks and have targeted al qaeda and taliban leaders but these attacks have also resulted in civilian casualties and how do you report such emotionally uh, fraught issues without you know demonstrating bias in one way or another um I'm going back to your first question about the harassment well it does go on frankly speaking i mean not only do we have to exercise self censorship mm -hmm. we do get threats and then there's this issue that the government might pull the ads if you report something against them like i remember in 2007 when i wrote an editorial against general musharraf he was the president back then yeah. and he pulled the ads from my paper the pa previous paper i worked for so he stopped so it. that was yeah, interference that, that's in, in that's sense. harassment that was a punishment sound, yeah that happens and we do get i mean messages or you know stuff yeah. from our either our intelligence agencies or the militants if you're writing against them mm. so there is a lot of harassment in pakistan so a lot of journalists just exercise self censorship and they are very cautious but how is that uh, <coughs> there's a fine line when you are self censoring yourself um how do you report something without being biased we try to give our best my organization dawn news is known for its unbiased news we just try to report the facts we do not uh, entertain anybody there are certain political parties that call you up send their officials and pressurize you to carry their news in their own way but uh, b because of our editorial policy we have that liberty that we do not get pressurized and we can carry news the way we want but there's one thing that i want to add that through my 5 years of journalistic career i've observed this thing that every journalist is being monitored in pakistan what do they do what do they write what do they write how are they traveling who are they talking to and what are they covering everything is being monitored your phones are being tapped you are somebody is there to monitor you always and they may show their presence to you every now and then just to show you that we are keeping an eye on you so these are the thing that they are the tactics that they play to pressurize you but if a journalist uh, gets under pressure there's no use of him being there because you have to objectively report without caring what they're going to do with you because if you are afraid you cannot report <laughs> So another issue that I would like to look at is religion and reporting. Hmm. Um how do you tackle uh dedicate emotionally charged issues such as Islamic radicalism? Uh do people accuse you accuse you of being un-Islamic hmm. if you when you report uh, something uh about radicalization? And what about social battles over um things such as teaching Islamic um in in Islamic madrasas? or um strict adherence of uh the Quran or do you guys have any um muslim country approach to mm. these issues well um like i am my paper daily times is one of the most liberal and progressive papers in pakistan so what we do is that we have this editorial policy of being being secular and you know at the same time we don't want to hurt the sentiments of anybody but like on the issue of the blasphemy law which has resulted in two high profile assassinations one of the governor of punjab mr salman tasir who was also the publisher of my paper mm -hmm. he was shot on january 4th this year 
and then a federal minorities minister was shot in on March 2nd and this year on the blasphemy issue what we have done is we have still despite all this what's going on we have still kept on covering the issue and asking for the repeal or amendment of the blasphemy law because it's being misused it's not an islamic law per se it's it's actually resulted in a lot of injustice so there are other issues like that that we've been covering non stop i mean there are threats obviously and you know i mean there is a danger that somebody might not like it and might end Do up doing something yes it, yeah. but as you know like i always believe in this that if you cannot report honestly or if you yeah. cannot do your work properly then you might as well leave journalism then you might as well join some other field yeah those are the risks that you take when you enter yes. the profession also i, I want, want to <coughs> say about the drone attacks mm-hmm. you asked the question but we couldn't answer it uh, basically as well as myself is concerned i am very i'm support these drone attacks because we have seen that uh, most of the wa- most wanted people were killed in these yeah, attacks yeah. but when you are uh, doing uh, drone attacks i know that the government of pakistan is uh, well aware of the fact that they with mutual agreement you are hitting these uh, terrorists but the problem is that when you are violating the in- integrity and sovereignty of pakistan that is a giving a bad name to the united states if it could be done through the uh, government of pakistan it will be better than to improve the relations between the two states because it, it is affecting the the common uh, men they don't know about what was what's going on who is permitting and who is attacking but they only know that on the us the drones are hitting the people in pakistan hmm. so i i mean that it should be done through the pakistani authorities okay uh lastly i wanted to uh probably direct this question to Mohammed um according to uh, a 2010 report by a committee to protect journalists and both by reporters without borders Pakistan had a very dim uh, report uh, being uh, dubbed as the deadliest country for journalists and uh um you've mentioned that y- you you've been uh, a victim of a uh, uh, bomb blast wi- while uh reporting so uh I don't want to put you on the spot but if you want to share Uh, if you want to talk about it and uh, share about your experience reporting and what kind of challenges people uh, journalists face and how we can fix this problem well journalists uh, particularly in balochistan have to face numerous problems uh, particularly because the areas are far flung when you go for reporting you have it depends on the issue what kinds of reporting you are going to do if you are going to uh, work on uh, natural disasters uh, such like drought drought uh, uh, drought or uh, flood flood hit uh, to cover the reporting of flood hit areas or uh, or or any ter- or any ter- terrorist incident you have to you have to face uh, different kind of problems there uh, like uh, we ha- we covered uh, in t- in 1998 uh, a drought which hit uh, remote areas of balochistan particularly khuzdar and and uh, kalad districts uh, majority of the people people have to have uh, majority of the people uh, have to uh, sustain uh, receive uh, have to face numerous problems when they when they when the government could not uh, dispatch uh, edible goods or food stuff timely So I'm going to have to uh uh cut cut you short because we're running out of time and uh I would like to thank our guests today Malik Arsad Arsad Aziz Muhammad Ijaz Khan Hana Said and uh, Mohammad Sarfaz our director is Travis McMillan audio by pa- Pat Akers and production assistant is Stephanie Tabor Rebecca Wolfson is our executive producer our video producer is Tim Wall our other producers of global journalists are Courtney Flat David Cawthon Ryan Cress and Jessica Pavlak I am Salam Salam for Global Journalist reminding you that you can download, view or listen to this show plus additional features by going to globaljournalist.org. <laughs>